and welcome everyone to the Hand of God Ministry, to our grand opening. Can we get just a hand clap real quick? Come on, give me a hand clap. Give the Lord a hand clap, amen. I'm the senior pastor, Jesse Diaz, my wife, the associate pastor here at the Hand of God Ministry, Dalisa Diaz. And I just want to welcome everyone here today. If you're watching my Facebook Live, I want to welcome for, for you tuning in this morning. I believe God has something to say this morning. Can I get an amen? And God's been laying this in my heart for many months. I, I actually say he's been doing it for years now. And he says, I want you to start going live, Facebook. But there's been a hesitation where I haven't got the full release to do it. And I said, I just don't want to go on live without having a certain message for the world as well as the body of Christ. Can I get an amen? amen? And the Lord's been ministering to my spirit. He says, you need to minister the message of salvation. Amen. Getting people saved and they understanding what it means to be saved. Amen. And not just saying a prayer at the end of giving your life to Christ, but not really understanding what you're doing, but coming up. And just repeating a bunch of words, but not amen. really understanding the significance of what you're praying at that very moment. You do it. Amen. amen. But I want to go through the gospel and I want to take you through the word of God so that you have a full understanding of what it means to have salvation. Can I get an amen? amen. amen. And the title I want to present to you today is Restoring People Back to God. Amen. I'll say it again. <laughs> restoring People Back to God. Amen. Whether you're backslidden or whether you're lost. This is the main reason God sent his only begotten son to die on Calvary's cross. So you and I could be saved, set free, and have our relationship restored back to God. How many knows that was lost all the way in the Garden of Eden? And so when Adam sinned, his sin became our sin. Do you understand that? That when we are born into this life, we are born with a sinful nature. And God says, look, I got to send somebody to redeem my people back from where they are because we cannot redeem ourselves, saints. And I want to take you to a place in the Gospels where Jesus has already started his ministry. The whole reason Christ came to the earth so that he could be a sacrifice for the sins of the world, so he could be our substitute, so he could pay our sin debt, the very thing we couldn't do because of the fall of man. You see all the evil that's happening in the world right now. All the hurt, all the lost, all the sickness, everything that is evil in the world right now is due because of the fall of man. Because of sin. The, orig the origin of sin that came through Adam. And every one of us are born with this disease. Can I get an amen? Amen. And I want to take you to the book of John chapter 3. If you have your Bibles today. We are a word church. Hallelujah. I thank God that we're a word church. And if you don't have your uh, Bible today, you can use one under the chair or in front of you. We're reading out of the New Living Translation. And I want you to see what's going on here in, in the text in John chapter 3, verse 1. Are you with me? Amen. Don't worry, the Holy Ghost is going to show up. This is just the intro. We haven't even gotten started yet. John chapter 3, verse 1. And it says there in verse 1, there was a man, everybody say man, man, named Nicodemus, a Jewish leader who was a Pharisee. Now the Bible says that here Nicodemus is coming to see Jesus. And if you read chapter 1 and 2, it says that Jesus has already gone into the temple and he's cleansed the temple. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Where he made the whips. And he chased all of the money changers out of the church, which is a type and shadow that you're not to merchandise the house of God. Amen. My house shall be called holy unto the Lord, the bread of life. Amen. Amen. And that's how we are to treat the house of God. But they were merchandising the house of God. And Nicodemus saw Jesus Christ in action, cleansing the temple, taking authority over the devil, pushing him out of the church. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. And so here, Nicodemus, something's going on with him. He's a religious leader. He is sitting on the courts of the Sanhedrin, and he is one of the ruling bodies of Israel at the time. And also, some translations or some tradition says that 
He was the third richest man in Israel. A godly man. A Pharisee. A Sadducee. Pharisees so far they can't see. Sadducees so sad they can't see. Because what? They're bound in religion. And Nicodemus is starting to sense something different with this man, Jesus Christ. Something is there, and something is beginning to minister to Nicodemus. Can I get an amen? amen? He's got all the religion in the world. He's got the law. He's got the Ten Commandments. He's got the Old Testament. Okay? He's rich. He's got all his needs met, but yet he's going to seek out Christ because something is still missing. Are you hearing me, saints? Yes. Nothing in this world will fill you up like Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. That is the way we were created. The Bible says in Genesis that we were created in, in the likeness of God. Yes. He created man in the likeness of himself. And we were made for one thing, and we were made for what? Fellowship. Mm. That's why we need God. That's why in this life, when we go through this life, we feel empty sometimes. We feel lonely. And we start to reach out to everything around us. Drugs, alcohol, <coughs> relationships, jobs, uh, prestige, money, whatever the case may be in your life. Why? Because you're trying to bond with something in fellowship with something. Because you and I were created for fellowship. But we were created for fellowship with God Almighty. Woo! Nothing like God will fill up that little tiny space in your heart. Not money, not drugs, not alcohol, not more relationships, not the job, not anything in this earth can fill you up except God and God alone. And Nicodemus is starting to sense something with Christ. I heard about this Messiah that was coming. Could this be the Messiah? Could this be the anointed one? Can this be the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world? And so he knows the law. That everything pointed to Christ coming. He knows that the sins of the world shall be laid upon the Messiah, the anointed one to come. And now he's coming and he's visiting Christ. Now let's go ahead and read some more. Verse 2. After dark. Oh boy. One evening. He came to speak with Jesus. He said, Rabbi. He said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your, your miraculous signs, your miracle signs are evidence that God is with you. Now stop right there, saints. Nicodemus is coming by night. <laughs> he didn't come during the day when, when Christ's ministry was in broad daylight. Because he might be seen by his Pharisees and Sadducees, his religious friends, may not agree of him going out and meeting Christ. Amen? So he says, I got to sneak in darkness. Not only out of shame, but out of fear as well, Nicodemus is coming by night. I heard a preacher say one time, this is Nick at night. <laughs> Amen. Nicodemus is seeking out Jesus Christ. And he says that the first thing he mentions, he goes, I know that you are a rabbi. I know that you are a teacher and that God is with you. First, he acknowledges him as what? A man. Jesus Christ is not just a man. He's fully man and fully God. Amen. He's the word <laughs> of God that put on flesh and dwelt among us. Can I get an amen? amen? And you have to understand who Jesus Christ is. He is the son of the living God. But Nicodemus, he doesn't quite got his theology correct here. He doesn't really understand who Christ is just yet. He'll know that after the cross. But as for now, he's seeking out. Some of you came to seek. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in here. Something is missing. It's simply restoring you back to God. Having fellowship with God. Even a, a full-blown saint who's been serving the Lord for many years can still get to a place of feeling like there's something missing. Can I get an amen? amen. And that's just the Lord saying, I need you to come spend a little time with me. That's all. Right. So I can fill you up again. It's not a one-time experience when you give your life to Christ, see? You don't just get saved and that's it, I'm done. There's a whole lot of work that goes on after you get saved. Can I get in here? Amen. Amen. Woo, and that's the best part of salvation. We'll get to that in a minute. Verse 3, are you there? Oh, it's going to just get gooder as we go. 
And Jesus replied after Nicodemus said what he said. He said, I know God is with you. Miracles, you're, you're doing miracles. You know, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. This is Jesus speaking in red. Unless you are born again, you cannot, everybody say, see. See, see the kingdom of God. Christ has already wrecked this man's theology. Because as far as Nicodemus was concerned, he had salvation. He belonged to God. And Christ is saying, look, there's something more that needs to take place before you can see the kingdom of God. That word see means experience. You cannot experience the kingdom of God. The Bible says the kingdom of God is within. You cannot have fellowship with God. You cannot experience God. It doesn't mean that you're going to see God with your physical eyes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And seeing God with your physical eyes in this flesh body, you'll die. We're not capable. Our flesh cannot, is not capable of seeing God with our visible eyes because we're still in this sinful body. Amen. Amen. And Jesus told him, you must be born again. In order to see, experience, have fellowship with me, you have to be born again. Amen. So already, Nicodemus says, oh my gosh, this man is crazy. I don't understand what he's saying. i got to be born again. Have you ever heard that term before? You would be surprised some of you church folks have been in church so long that you go and talk to a lost person. Or even a church person nowadays in the modern church, they don't know what that means. Being born again. What is this? I don't understand this born again stuff. What are you talking about, pastor? What are you talking about, Christian? Let's go a little further. And what did Nicodemus say? What do you mean? I, I don't understand what you're saying, Jesus. Explain Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? That was his answer, his question to Jesus. Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can. Everybody say enter. Enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Woo! I love that. Did you see the text, how it's changing? He said, first of all, you can't see the kingdom of God. Second, he's saying you can't enter either. Unless you're born of the spirit, you cannot see, experience your fellowship with God. There is no salvation. There is no seeing the kingdom of God. There is no what? Entering the kingdom of God. And Jesus is telling him, you must be born of what? The water and of the spirit. Now, now let me stop there. It's very important. If you could be saved by water, <laughs> I would put a tub here of water and just throw water on all of you. <laughs> you cannot be saved by water. I'm going to say it again. You cannot be saved by water. <laughs> The only time you're baptized in the water is after you're saved, after you receive Christ. It is a shout from the rooftop and a celebration with those around you that something has, ha has happened on the inside. And the baptism of water is simply you going down and being buried to that old life and coming up and celebrating your new life with Christ. That means old things have passed away. Behold, all things are becoming new now in my life. And Jesus is saying that you must be born of the water and of the spirit. Well, what does that mean? That means you must come to the womb of the woman first and then be born again of the spirit of God. Amen. Are you hearing me say that? Why? I don't understand why that's so important. Because you cannot enter in unless you receive salvation. You cannot enter in to covenant relationship with God unless you are born again. You cannot see nor enter in to covenant relationship with God outside of what Christ Jesus has done on Calvary's cross. Amen. And then he sends the spirit. Well, why is Jesus saying that you must be born again? That means that something's dead inside us. Are you hearing me? We're dead somewhere. And Jesus is saying about born again, you got to be born. I don't, I don't really understand. I'm taking it all the way down to where you can understand what the Holy Ghost is trying to relate to you today. He's saying that you cannot save yourself. You cannot be born on your own. You cannot create anything on your own. It's simple faith in what Christ has already done 2,000 years ago on Calvary's cross through the shedding of his blood. As soon as you put your faith in, 
And what Christ has done, the Holy Spirit fills your spirit. Your spirit that is dead because of Adam and the fall of Adam. I'm giving y'all the gospel. This is the good news. Some of y'all to be shouting. Some of y'all are like, what are you talking about? I've never heard this. I've been in church all my life. Because the origin of sin started with Adam. Those were our first parents. And when Adam sinned, his sin became our sin. That's why when you come into the world, the first thing you do is... You start crying. That's your flesh crying out. Gimme, gimme, gimme. That is the stinginess of our sinful, wretched nature. Can I get an amen? Amen. Well, how do I know that? You don't have to teach a little boy how to steal, how to lie, how to cheat. That's already in their DNA. But you have to tell them how to tell the truth. You have to teach them how to share. And you got to share. You can't just keep that all to yourself. You got to teach them how to love. Because it's not a part of our DNA. If you understand that the origin of sin came from Adam and Eve, you'll understand why Christ came. God says, I got to put another program here into action. I got to start getting some things together. Old Testament is full of sacrificial offerings. If you read the Old Testament, all of those animal sacrifices they brought in, they all pointed to Christ and what he would do. Those animal sacrifices were not good enough to cleanse our sin completely. It was only covering them so they could continue to have favor with God in Israel's time. He says a new better covenant has come. A new testament, a new agreement has come about. And it came through the way of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That says no one comes to the Father except through me. He says I made a way where there seemed to be no way to get back to the Father. He says the way is through the torn flesh body of Jesus Christ on the cross. And you don't have to do anything to be saved. Simply faith in what Christ has already done. Jesus Christ said, it is finished. It is finished. I'm done. I'm seated at the right hand of the Father. I've already paid for the sins of the world. All you and I have to do is acknowledge what Jesus Christ has already done. And the way becomes open where it was closed off for man going in and having a relationship with God. It's been blown open now. Because of the blood of Jesus. The blood is powerful. That's right. And he's saying you must be born of the water and of the spirit. Oh, it's so good. It's so rich, saints. It's so rich. I wish I had six services with y'all. So you could really understand why, why it's so needed for us to be born again. You can't come in, saint, with everything already cleaned up. You can't start going to church. Uh, well, I got to get rid of this. I got to get rid of that. It doesn't work like that. Are you hearing me? You don't, you don't come to church when you have your life right. <laughs> a lot of people think like that. Well, I've been, you know, over here. No, you need to come because of that. Whatever's going on out there in the world, this is where you need to be. Amen? Amen. And Jesus is saying that you must be born again because something is dead inside you. Every one of us, when we're born into the world, our spirit man, the real person, our soul is dead. Because of sin, because of trespasses, because of transgressions. Amen. We're born with that sinful nature. You have to understand that, Saint. Amen. So that the convicting power of the Holy Ghost, conviction means convincing. Holy Spirit starts convincing you of a Savior. I need to be saved. Amen. And when you believe in Jesus, woo, I remember when I first believed in Christ. And I gave my life to Jesus. I had my brothers come and they were trying to minister to me. And I fought every bit of it. I, I, I mean, these are brothers. I'm talking about blood brothers. I used to hang with. We used to hang in the streets together. We used to party in the streets together. We used to hurt people. We, I used to sell drugs, alcohol, all that stuff. And they're coming at me now with this change, transformation they've happened. And you know, when family comes to you, it's gotta stick for a little while before you start believing it's real, right? Can I get an amen? amen? Oh, that's so and so. I know who you are. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we'll see what happens in a year. <laughs> well, it's not rubbing away. I was waiting for it to just be a phase and for it to go away. And I remember one time, and this is Pastor Lisa and I. And we're recording before we met in the world. And this right here is, is just a miracle right here. Me and my wife. It's a miracle. 20 years being married. Amen. Miracle. Because we met in the world. God saved us. Pulled us apart and brought us back together. 
It's like I was meeting a new person for the first time. Didn't know who she was. She didn't know who I was. That is the born again experience. Amen. That's the born again experience. God takes and fills you with the Holy Ghost. That is the Holy Spirit's job. It's called regeneration. He regenerates your spirit. He makes your spirit come alive. He takes out the stony heart. Woo, and he puts a heart of flesh. You're sensitive now to the love of God. God starts to love you and you feel the love of God. You start to become sensitive to sin. You're like, Lord, the devil, the devil. No, no, it's not the devil, the devil, the devil. After you get saved, it's that I'm sensitive, sensitive, sensitive now to things I used to do. And I don't want to do them anymore. Can I get an amen? amen? Your spirit comes alive. And that's just the beginning of your journey. When the spirit comes and he comes into your life and you're born again, you're made alive because of faith in Christ Jesus and what he's done. The Holy Spirit begins to go to work on you. He begins to sanctify you. He begins to clean you up. He begins to make you like you're supposed to be. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't come in already after saved and everything. I'm here. I'm great. I'm ready to roll. Don't worry about that, saints. I got saved. My brothers kept coming at me, ministering me the gospel. And I had some salty language for them. <laughs> Y'all never did, amen? No salty language. When your family's coming at you, loving on you, and you don't understand. My brothers just... Now, one time God upset with me, extended mercy, extended their love, their grace, and kept loving me and inviting me to church, kept telling me about the gospel, kept telling me Jesus wants to save you. Jesus loves you. You need Jesus in your life, brother, because I was a wreck. I was lonely, but I had it going on. Amen? No one ever would ever know. I was tormented, fear, loneliness, thoughts of suicide, bound by drugs, alcohol. I was living my own life. I was living my best life. I was living my truth. Am I getting messy now? Amen. I feel tired of hearing that. The only truth we need is the truth of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. The truth is found in what Christ has done and him crucified. That is where your foundation rests. I didn't know that. All I know is that I was fighting against the powers of darkness. Because I was completely and totally possessed because I was lost. My brothers kept coming at me and they finally invited me. And I said, you know, you get that. Okay, finally I'm going to go. I'm going to go see what this is all about. And some of us have come from a church background, religious background. And I walked into the church. Everybody's raising their hand, praising God. I said, what is going on here? This is madness. I'm not used to going into an actual church environment. Because I came from religion. All I see is everybody is quiet. You raising your hands, you shouting, you getting excited about God, getting, uh, getting just enthusiastic about your, your faith. That doesn't work. So I'm watching everybody praise God, worship God, and something starts to happen in here. I start feeling guilty and shame for the way I've lived my life. And the man of God just starts preaching the gospel, starts preaching Jesus Christ, and he preaches being born again. He says, you must be born of the water and of the spirit. I said, this guy is crazy. What is he talking about? And I heard it explained to me. And my brother, when they called for salvation to come up, my brother's right next to me, says, we gotta go. I want you to come up. I'll walk with you. I'll go to the front with you. And the preacher calls for people to get saved and come up to the front. And I went up to the front. Gave my life to Christ. That was 20-something plus years ago. And this is the part that I like to share as my testimony with those who are seeking or those who don't really understand the after. Because that's where the real work started happening. Amen? After I got saved and after I gave my life to Christ, I went back to my old life. I went back to selling drugs. I was saved, though. I was truly saved. Otherwise, I wouldn't be standing here. But when I gave my life to Christ, I felt things just shooting out of me. Demons loosening their grip off of me. Deliverance happening. But I didn't understand what was going on. I just knew I was being born again. The Holy Ghost filled me that day. Amen. And I went to the back and got baptized in the Holy Ghost. I said, let me have everything. I, I know what's in there. I've been out in the world long enough. This is real. I feel this thing. Otherwise, I wouldn't be preaching and teaching you today. Went home, went back right to my lifestyle. But it wasn't the same. Things began to get worse around me now. Where it wasn't as worse, now it's even worse. More worse. 
The Lord began to deal with me. He began to clean me up. He began to sanctify me. And as Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, he tells him, you must be born of the water and of the spirit. Saints, my whole thing in telling you is that you can't clean yourself up. That's the Holy Spirit's job. And God knew that. That's why Jesus said, if I don't go away, I cannot send the comforter. I cannot send the Holy Spirit. He's the one that cleans you up. All you have to do, you and I, is stay attached to the vine. And Christ does the rest through his spirit. Can I get an amen? amen. amen. <clears throat> Verse 5 says, Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of the water and of the spirit. In verse 6, he says, humans can reproduce only human life. Jesus getting further teaching, he says, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to what? Spiritual life. So verse 7, he says, so don't be surprised, Satan. Don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. Woo! Verse 8, the wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it's going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. Can anybody see the wind? You can't see the wind visibly. Saints, you can't see the Holy Spirit, okay? But when you see the wind move through the trees, you see the trees move and you see the effects of the spirit or the wind moving. And you see the effects of the trees moving. The wind moves, the trees shake, and the leaves fall. <coughs> Same thing, Jesus is giving him a beautiful analogy right here. He's saying, you don't see the spirit, but you can see the effects of the Holy Spirit after someone is saved because of the transformed life. That is the power of the Holy Ghost. I'll say it again, that's the power of the Holy Ghost. That will invade every part of your life. Something you can't get yourself off of, the Holy Ghost will show up. All of a sudden, I don't feel like smoking no more. All of a sudden, this drink doesn't taste like it used to anymore. All of a sudden, I can't hang around that group of people no more. It doesn't mean that you're holier than thou art. It means there's something going on inside you. Amen. The Holy Ghost is doing a work inside you. All you got to do is stay attached. And keep your faith anchored in what Jesus Christ has already done for the entirety of the world. Amen. So you walk this thing out. You have fellowship with God. He's provided salvation. Verse 9. How are these things possible? <laughs> Nicodemus asked. I want you to drop to verse 14. Got a few more verses. Verse 14, are you with me? Amen. He says, and as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up on the cross so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. Amen. We got the seeing the kingdom. We got entering into the kingdom. And now we have eternal life with our Lord and Savior. Jesus is telling him, he says, just like it was in the Old Testament, when Moses in the wilderness list, lifted up the serpent upon the pole, Jesus is saying, so I shall be lifted up. He gave him the Holy Ghost. Now he's giving him the cross. He's saying, I shall be lifted up. And when I'm lifted up, I shall destroy all the works of Satan and I shall cleanse you of sin. Those who will call upon the name of Jesus Christ, the Bible says, shall be saved rescued and filled with the Holy Ghost. Time is growing short, saints. And you can sense the day and age we live in, that we are truly in the last days. And there's going to be a great outpouring of God's Spirit that will take place for the last roundup for those to get saved. Amen. Because Christ is coming back. Amen. I'll say it again, Christ is coming back for the church. Amen. The only way you're going to see Him the only way you're going to enter in is so you're born of the, of the water and of the spirit and you receive Jesus Christ and what he did on Calvary's cross. Amen. And I want to finish with this scripture. In verse 16, for God so loved the world. Hallelujah. He loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. <laughs>